Hello everybody, Arturo Johnson here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the three things that you need to do as an entrepreneur to be successful. And um, this video is gonna be a little bit different. I know a lot of the videos that I've been doing for financial advisors and life insurance agents, they have been about technical things. And all of those things are important, but I realized from following someone that I really look up to that those things are really, really simple and you can Google those. So um, a lot of my videos won't be about any of that anymore. And it'll really just be about focusing on principles because when you focus on principles instead of tactics, then you focus on things that won't change, right? And so um, if you haven't read that book, it's from, it's a book from Ray Dalio called Principles and I highly recommend that. And so when you focus on tactics, you're focused on the newest gimmick, the newest trick, the newest, the hottest thing, right? And what happens when you focus on those? Well, um, things end up, you know, becoming a fad and then they flame out. But when you focus on principles, these are things that'll be the same 100 years from now. And so in today's video, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the three things that you need to be successful as an entrepreneur. Um, and so before I get into that, um, if you are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and click the like button, as well as if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe um, so you can get more valuable content just like this. Um, I'll be delivering at least, I'd say three to five videos per week talking about um, how to grow your business, um, especially for life insurance agents and financial advisors that are already having success and they're looking to build their team and really just take their business to the next level. And so um, let's go ahead and get started. And so the first thing that you need in order to be successful in business is you need to be resourceful. And what really what that means is creativity. And a lot of people lack creativity in business is because what I find is that they're just following the next person that they uh, see or was trained, right? And so what they do is they just do monkey see monkey do and a lot of times when that happens a lot of people just end up copying something that's wrong and i hear this a lot of time from life insurance agents and financial advisors right i've been in the business for 30 years i've been doing this for 30 years and that's great but you know a lot of people have been doing this wrong for a long time and so you know thinking about being resourceful and creative right when things go wrong for example, with the coronavirus, there was nothing that we could have done to predict this, but what we were able to do is to be resourceful, right? So we had to figure out some ways to be able to get in front of some ideal clients. And we were able to use Zoom, we were able to use LinkedIn, we were able to use Instagram, we were able to use Facebook. And in your business, there's gonna be some of the same things. There's gonna be some ups and downs. There's gonna be a ton of different things that you can't predict and you just gotta be resourceful. And what that means is, is taking action. What you don't wanna do is sit around and start predicting things that may happen and coming up with scenarios of things that you would do on things that would happen, right? And what we wanna do is, which I heard someone else say this, is we wanna come up with just in time solutions, right? Which means that in the moment, in the event that anything happens, you want to make sure that you are solving a problem, you know, just in time. So you only want to be focusing on the, the next problem and that solution and that only. You don't want to spend time and hours studying just for the heck of it for knowledge that you may or may not ever use because that's not going to move the boat forward. And so um, I hope that makes sense. Um, just in time solutions. And the next one is optimism. And there was a quote from uh, Neil Armstrong 
and the NASA team that said, in order for them to get to the moon, um, it takes an optimist. And why is that? Because if you believe that it won't work, it probably won't. And optimism is infectious, just like uh, positive positivity and a positive outlook is. And so whenever you have someone that wants to start a business, um, you always want to have an optimistic optimistic outlook. And, and so why is that important? And the reason why that is important is because in business, you have to have a positive outlook on yourself. Because a lot of times the reason why people fail in business is not because they, they suck at business, it's because they have issues in their personal life that reflect in their business. And so what you wanna do is you wanna have a positive outlook um, and a positive identity and self image for yourself. And if you don't, then we wanna reverse engineer, try to model and create one. And I'll, I have already created a video that goes into depth on how to reverse engineer success. And you can go ahead and check that out. But again, you wanna have a, a positive uh, self image, a positive outlook on the future, and you wanna have an optimistic view on what you're doing which allows you to have conviction to take action. And the third thing is you wanna have discipline over motivation. And so why is that important? Because motivation is one of those things that comes and goes, and it's more of associated with a feeling or something in the moment. And what discipline does is it's a hygiene standard. Just like you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you take a shower and you get ready, well, that's a hygiene standard. And what you wanna do, you wanna make success and being at a peak performance, a hygiene standard. So that now everything that you do is in excellence. And so how do we do that? Well, one is having a routine and sticking to it, right? Having, a, having um, get, going to bed and waking up at the same time. And when I can just stop there because a lot of people um, don't even have this one mastered, right? They stay up all hours of the night on Facebook and Netflix, and they can't even master going to bed at a decent hour to get up in the morning to, to be successful. And so how can you run um, a successful business long-term, right? Thinking long-term off of four hours of sleep. Now you can probably manage to do that for a little bit, but over a long period of time, if your competitor is getting eight hours of sleep, and, and working really hard all day and you're trying to work and grow a business off of four hours of sleep, what's gonna happen? They're gonna catch you, they're gonna find out what you're doing, they're gonna do it better, and they're gonna wipe you out. And so, um, you know, just starting with having a morning routine, right? Making sure that you're well rested. You don't wanna be fighting every single day against your own chemicals in your body because you aren't well rested so that your brain can, can function at an optimal rate. <clears throat> the second thing is, is you want to make sure that you get some form of exercise. Now, I know a lot of people may not be big in exercise. Me personally, you know, it's just incorporated into my life. But, um, you know, you want to warm your body up and you want to feed your body and you want to treat it well. Right. Um, you know, good health is priceless. And if you want to do something long term, then you have to, uh, you know, have this kind of compound health effect of you know, eating the right things, getting the proper exercise and getting the proper sleep. And so that takes me into the next one, which is making sure that you choose the right food to eat. Now you don't have to turn into um, a, a vegan or a health nut or anything like that, but you know, just, it's all about making good choices, right? You know, I eat whatever I want um, on the days that, you know, I just kind of want to binge out on something, but for the most part, you know, I eat pretty healthy and clean. And so I have a, a green smoothie after a workout every morning. And then I have a very light lunch so that I can stay focused. And then I pretty much try to have something healthy for dinner. And um, then I may have some dessert. Um, and so those are uh, three kind of examples of how you can eat healthy. And then the fourth thing is to make sure that you surround yourself with good people who have integrity, intelligent and they make you better right it's people who add value to your life and so i know a lot of people can have you know you have that one person or that one family member or that one friend that you talk to 
and man, when you get off of the phone with them, you need to go lay down for a little bit because they just drained you, right? And so what you wanna do is systematically start to remove people from your life that are, you know, 80% of the time they're taking, coming to you to need things, um, they're draining you, right? And never coming to the table with anything. And you wanna remove those people and you wanna replace them with people that you get excited to, to speak with, to meet with, people that you look up to that are maybe a little bit ahead of you, or people that you aspire to be like that have some characteristics that you not necessarily have at the moment, but just being near them and kind of watching them, they'll start to, you'll start to, to take on those things yourself. And, um, you know, my mother was right, you know, it's all about the company that you keep, right? Birds of a feather flock together. And so when you associate with winners and people who are excelling and doing well, they're always celebrating something, hitting a new milestone, right? They are always seem to be, um, you know, having some kind of good fortune. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself with and not, you know, people that always seem to have bad luck, people always taking L's, always finding themselves in a fix because these people tend to think that they have bad luck and the more bad luck you think you have, you know, that's going to attract things that are going to be in your perception that your world is going to revolve around not only something bad happening, but you just waiting for the next bad thing to happen to reconfirm what you already think. And this is a very destructive kind of mindset. And so um, I say all that to say, you know, these are things that you want to do to to be disciplined. And um, this is why discipline is more powerful than motivation, because motivation will go up and down and motivation will fade away. You know, some days I don't want to work out, some days I don't want to work. But when you have discipline, it's just a standard. You get up and you get the job done no matter what. And this is um, how you do things. So um, again, I hope these things were helpful. And so just to, to recap, um, the three things that you need is to be creative and resourceful, to be disciplined, over-motivated, and to, to be optimistic and have a positive outlook on life, positive self-identity, and a positive belief that you believe in your ability to figure it out. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, leave a few comments below. If you like this video, click and subscribe to the channel, as well as I do have a link for a free masterclass if you're a life insurance agent or financial advisor, and you'd like to know more about how to grow your business to that six and seven figure level, feel free to click the link below and watch the step-by-step -step process on how I've been able to get dozens of clients just like you great results, testimonials uh, from those guys that are having success. And, you know, there's no magic here. It's just a proven process online that's uh, predictable and repeatable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you.